we think of now as the Industrial Revolution really started in the need for Britain to produce far more goods to send round the world to global markets as well as internally and moving it into what we now call the factory system where all the workers are brought under one roof and they're designed, if you like, they're, it's purpose built to boost and keep up productivity. And in areas like this where the, the hilly, rugged, wild Pennine landscape can't support many people in fact, the population was very low. But what we did have on our side in West Yorkshire and in Lancashire, which is just across the border, our neighbour, is that we have very heavy rainfall, uh, quite a humid climate and very fast flowing rivers and lots of water courses to move goods around. Originally, carpet, the carpet tiles were supposed to be going down, and then the owner um, decided that it wasn't what he wanted, uh, and then it got sort of changed to the last minute to carpet. That's why we're a little bit behind with doing floors because otherwise, it'd have been finished now. So when people are setting up a new factory, they have to think about how much they're likely to spend. And there are a number of ways of keeping your overheads low, because what you want is you want to be paying out as little as possible and making as much profit as you can, especially in the first few years where you, know, you might go under and your loans might be called in. When I think of a butterfly, I think of air, I think of space, I think of beauty, I think of colours. Beauty, freedom, um, nature, colourful, I've never, never really thought about it to be honest. When it comes to the people who really set the industrial revolution in motion, we tend to think of very charismatic individuals, geniuses if you like, people who are inventors, people who are creative minds, who come up with a, a solution for a problem that nobody's been able to fully fix before. Now in modern factories we tend to see that they're on one level, that there's much more communication staff are encouraged to talk to each other and encouraged to share ideas and to work in the same ways to share their working um, day and that wasn't the case in Victorian factories they were built along the lines of a warehouse because warehouses were really the biggest buildings that were available in Georgian Britain to store things and to move things in and out of with cranes and hoists so factories followed the model of warehouses that they were rectangular tall buildings with lots of floors and that you would winch things up and down. But remember that everything's being brought in with horses. We're on the backs of carts and wheeled vehicles. Now we have large trucks that need to be able to drive into a site and to unload a product or take a product on. So now we need one level factories with big doors and loading bays and equipment to load things horizontally instead of vertically. So it's just that what we make is slightly different and our, essentially our way of moving it around is very different. A question I often get asked, or I should say a comment that people make to me, is we don't make things in Britain anymore and it couldn't be further from the truth. We do, but we make what essentially we became famous for in the first place in manufacture. We make very specialised products for niche markets. And the difference really is instead of employing 500 people at very low wages in dirty, unsafe, 
unhygienic conditions. Instead of doing that, we employ a smaller amount of people in that industry, in factories, in modern factories. They don't belch out all the pollution. They're not visible. They're low level. They sit behind residential areas on industrial estates in the countryside often and people don't notice them. But in this part of the world, 15% of working people still work in a factory environment. That's quite a lot for a, a modern dynamic, modern economics. So really what we have is the, almost the best of both worlds. We make products, we produce things, and we ship them all over the world. And our expertise is in demand all over the world. But we are a smaller, more specialised factory workforce as a result, who are more likely to own a home, have good health, have a car, have holidays, have access to all sorts of things that their ancestors 200 years ago could not have.